So today we have the second in a long line of patron requests, and this one is Priestess of the Lost Colony, written by Brandon Pilcher, and I will say that I think this one is a great start. Like, I don't think it's a great book, but it's a great start to a book, and overall I did enjoy myself. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So this is essentially an alternate history slash fantasy story about this colony in Greece. It's an Egyptian colony, although they refer to Egypt as Kemet and the people as Kemetians in this, which is, that, that is actually an old name for Egypt, so it's not like he just made that up out of nowhere. But anyways, it's a Egyptian colony in Greece, which is conquered by, oh, wrote his name, Skillax. I, I swear I can never remember that, I'm sorry. But it's conquered by Skillax, who is the king of Greece at that time, and uh, a priestess named Itawaret and her brother. Uh, she's a priestess and also kind of a princess. It's a, it's a little confusing, and I wish it had been explained better. But basically, they escape, and they're like, okay, our city has been destroyed, all, our people have been enslaved, we're on the run, what now? And they're like, okay, let's go look for some help to try and get our home back. And from there, the adventure unfolds pretty much how you would expect it to. Now, this story does not have a lot of unexpected twists or turns. It's pretty straightforward for the most part, but that's not a bad thing. In fact, I would say it's done eh, competently. Like, all of the events that happen in the story, I think, are pretty interesting. Like, okay, they run into this guy who can maybe help them on their way, and then they decide, okay, let's go to Troy and see if we can get help from the king there, and then so on and so forth. So. Yeah, that is pretty neat, but it's just not... All the stuff in between those events is not very good. Basically, this is a book with fun story and characters, but as I started reading it, I was thinking, man, this needed to be, like, twice as long, because there were points that, okay, there needed to be, like, an entire other chapter here in order to go over some stuff that they kind of skipped, and there's points where I'm like, okay, this conversation should have gone on a lot longer. Uh, and as the book went on, I started to disagree with that assessment, and I was, by the end I thought, yeah, it needed to be at least three times longer. Because there's a lot of neat stuff in here, but there's no build-up to most of it. Uh, one of the most egregious examples is at the beginning, where we're learning, okay, there's apparently this Egyptian colony in Greece. Like, those didn't exist in real life, so you would need to spend a little bit of time explaining what that is, how it works, and what uh, it's like for the people living there. And later on it's actually mentioned that they can't go to Egypt for help because Egypt has been conquered by the Hyksos at this point and they they wouldn't help them. And it, I didn't really think about that until that moment, but I was really like, yeah, that, that, that should have been brought up earlier. They should have mentioned that at some point, like, okay, we were an Egyptian colony under the rule of the pharaoh, but it, at some point, they were conquered, so we're basically independent right now. And then also, we have Skillax coming in with his army, like, literally right away in the first chapter, and it's just, oh, okay, apparently there's this big conqueror guy who can take over your city without much issue. And I think had they spent at least a chapter establishing that, okay, yeah, this guy exists and he's out there and he's kind of a threat to us, but right now we'll focus on other stuff, and then later he comes and's like, haha, I will take your city, then that would have really helped. That, that would have helped uh, it build some tension, and it would have helped us get more into the character's mindset and uh, be more attached to them as well, so we wouldn't want bad things to happen to them, and so on and so forth. And then, uh, possibly even worse than that, are that a bunch of the events that happen happen too quick. Like, for example, they go to meet the King of Troy to beg for help, and while they're there, they're talking to him and they're like, hey bro, can can you help us out here? And he's like, no. And then they're like, okay, but what if we did this and that? And he goes, hmm, okay. And I'm vastly oversimplifying, of course, because I don't want to, partially because I don't want to spoil stuff too much, but that is a lot, <laughs> that is a pretty much how it goes down. And on a similar note, the characters are good. They're at least a good start to a character, but they need they need more. Like, for example, the king of Troy, uh, when they first meet him, Troy is, like, full of refugees who have fled from wars from other places, and the king is, like, kind of trying to take care of them as best he can, but he's also turning a lot of people away, and when he doesn't agree to help them take back their city, uh, 
the main characters are like, okay, well, I guess this guy is just dumb. We don't like him. He He's greedy and selfish. We hate him. And the thing is, that's kind of an uncharitable descriptor of him, because even just in that brief bit we see him, we do see him chastise one of his guards because one of his guards was a little too aggressive in pushing refugees away, and the king straight up tells him, look, there's a difference between being stern and being cruel. And so the king really seems like a guy who wants to do good, but he's really stuck in a difficult situation, so yeah, that's, that's just not very fair uh, to treat him that way, I don't think. And Skylax as well, the villain, is just way too over the top with his evilness. Like, I'm not saying he necessarily needs to be, like, a complex villain. I mean, you could have tried to go that route. Like, uh, for example, there is a point where he mentions that he kind of has to conquer stuff in order to get all of the treasures and such that he needs to pay his army and to pay off his nobles, and if that doesn't happen, then they might rebel or something. And I think if you had spent a little more time on that, that could have been an interesting villain. But even, even without that, he's just like, a little too over the top with everything, uh, and he's just like, yes, I love conquering, mwahaha, all this pillaging and raping and taking slaves and killing everybody that stands in my way, I love it so much because I'm just pure evil. And I, I think if you really wanted to do a character like this, then or like that, who doesn't really have any redeeming qualities, then you could just try and hammer home how yeah, this is just how the world is. You know, sometimes some dude with an army will just come in and take all your stuff, and there's not. And if you aren't strong enough, then there's nothing you can do about it. That's just how the world works. It sucks, but that's how the world works. And I think you could do that and make him a maybe not a great villain, but at least a little bit less cartoony, because he's the only character in this that I just straight up didn't like. The rest of them, I think, are all at least decent. Because, like I said, they're a good start to a character. I mentioned the King of Troy, like a dude who's really stuck in a difficult situation but still trying to do his best, that's interesting. And Itawaret's father, who is the leader of their colony, he also seemed like he was stuck in a difficult situation and he was trying to do his best with it, but there, we just didn't get enough time with it. So, And his reaction to Skillax coming in and uh, not only wanting to take over his city but wanting to marry his daughter, his reaction to that kind of makes him seem selfish and short-sighted and well i get it he's trying to protect his daughter but like there's other people under his protection as well and it's just it could have been done a lot better and itawaret is the closest thing i hope i'm pronouncing that right if i'm not i apologize but itawaret is the closest thing to a main character that this book has and it seems to be building up like okay she's a woman who's just kind of expected to be a priestess no one really uh sees her as a leader or anything like that and so when she uh, turns out to be very intelligent and uh, a savvy politician and a savvy military general and stuff like that, then it takes people by surprise and then she gains their respect and they wind up following her, sort of. It's uh, a, a little different than you might be expecting based on that, but she doesn't really get a big moment where she gets to reveal that or any big moments where she gets to show off, yes, I am very intelligent and you people underestimated me. Like, there's a moment that was kind of, it seems almost like it was trying to be that. Like, it. this is a minor spoiler, I apologize, but it's pretty much the best way to show off what I'm saying. And basically, all the refugees of various nationalities that are in and around Troy, um, and the king is really having trouble feeding them and such, she goes up and straight up tells him, hey, if you help us uh, with our problem, we will take all these guys off your hands and they'll come to our city and help us rebuild because most of their population is dead anyways. And yeah, that, that is a pretty good idea, I think, but it just sort of comes in out of nowhere and everyone's like, oh, yeah, okay, that's, that's a good idea, let's do that. And it's not even treated as that big a deal, whereas it should have, say it with me, it should have been built up to and it really should have been this big moment where she kind of wows everyone and they're like, oh, yeah, okay, so... One, she's uh, generous and is really uh, looking out for other people, not just out looking out for herself. Uh, she puts her money where her mouth is, she's charitable, and she's smart by uh, coming up with this new idea. Like, okay, yeah, that, that could work. But she doesn't really get to have that big moment. The only other real issue I have here is that there are some modern ideals that are kind of 
uh, shoved in here, like characters will say something that just really doesn't fit in with the Bronze Age in terms of like tolerance or wealth disparity or something like that. And it's not that I disagree with this, and it's not even that I don't think you can put it in a story that takes place in 1600 BCE. It's just that, once more, you have to build up to it. Like, for example, if, uh, if you've ever seen the movie Kingdom of Heaven, uh, it's about the, the Second Crusade, or rather, it's about stuff that happens right before the Third Crusade, I should say. Uh, and there's a scene at the end where Balin of Ibelin, who is played by Orlando Bloom, basically gives a speech about how Jerusalem kind of belongs to everybody, you know, like he's not, he's saying the churches and the mosques and the synagogues, none of those are more important than the others. We all have claim and therefore none of us have claim and we shouldn't be fighting over it. And, you know, it, it's a nice sentiment, but it's also kind of some hippie bullshit that the real Balin of Ibelin would never have seen, never have said. But it works out okay in the movie because we see the character of Ibelin like have his own crisis of faith and we see him watch his fellow Christians do some kind of nasty stuff so he realizes okay maybe we're not always the good guys and he spends some time with like Muslims and Jews and he realizes okay they're not evil or anything. And so it makes sense how he could come to this uh, to this conclusion. And if we had gotten to see a little bit of that with the characters in here and where they realize, like, oh, okay, these foreigners really aren't bad people, or where they realize, okay, so these poor folks, sometimes they just need a little bit of help, and if I have the resources, I should give that to them, you know? That sort of thing, if there had just been time devoted to it, then it could have worked out okay, but as it stands, it does feel a little silly and anachronistic. And that's the main thrust of everything I have to say there. Like, there are a bunch of smaller problems in here, but they all can be traced back to that one big problem, which is that this book just isn't long enough and it doesn't devote time to the stuff it needs to. Like, I said before, it should be at least three times longer, and even that might not be quite enough. Like, there's a lot of ideas as well that are kind of brought up and then never uh, touched upon again, like how uh, the people of the Egyptian colony kind of want to be independent and want to maintain their independence, but they also want to stay loyal to their pharaoh back in Egypt, and how this is kind of causing a conflict, uh, or an internal conflict, I should say, in some of them, and that's a ne neat idea. And there's other ideas like that that I don't think they all needed to be explored, but at least some of them did. Like, if you're going to bring this up, at least some of them need to be explored. All that said, uh, I do think this is a pretty phenomenal start. I think that if Brandon Pilcher spends some more time going over this book and uh, really, really expands on it, and not, not completely rewrites it, obviously, but really expands on it, or if he takes the criticism here and some of the ideas in that book and writes a different one, I think he could really make something special. A special thanks to everyone who watched this far, and an even specialer thanks to all of my patrons, including the $10 and up guys, Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Ava Toomer, Brandon S. Pilcher, Brother Santodes, Christopher Quinten, Embis, Pfizer, Jeremy, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, Kevin Zhang, Liza Rudakova, Madison Lewis Bennett, Mel Austin, Microphone, Sad Mardigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, and Ve Victus. Man, that, that list is getting long. But I could not do this without you guys. You are seriously the best. And thanks again for watching. If you want to get your name on here, then consider donating to my page. We also get, have other perks that you can have access to. And if you don't want to do that, then simply rating the video, commenting on it, subscribe to my channel. All that stuff I'm supposed to say at the end here, that is a huge help. Anyways, uh, bye.